we should take uh, our, our money and take some of the money in the risk-free asset and the rest of the money we should put it in a risky asset. The risky asset should be well diversified, cheap, and that's how we should invest. Uh, as as uh, finance guys, we are these days much more empirist or uh, uh, looking into the, the real world empirical data. And US, <clears throat> US people were able to, uh, uh, to get the data from the US stock market. They recalculated back to 1820. I mean, 1820, that's 190 years. And the average uh, return over 190 years is 7%. And now tell me, are there, have, there, have there been any crises the last 190 years? I mean, there an enormous number of crises. And uh, that in some way doesn't matter. We always have crises. And the only prediction about the crisis we have is the next crisis will come. However, we don't know. But the beauty of the markets that uh, they incorporate the crisis. And if you're well diversified, there might be a crisis in China. Yeah, that's sort of okay. We, had, we also invested in Netherlands, Germany, or, or US, and so on. So well diversified and having that long-term perspective that helps to cover most of the crisis. There are so many examples of what people overreact and what people have their opinion on, on current uh, uh, development. We know ex from the psychological literature how do people make forecasts. Basically, people make forecasts if they take the price today and then adjust it. So they take the short-term perspective and adjust it. However, w why? I mean, what, that's that's not the point. And if you look, for example, my, my favorite one these days is the price of gold. If you see the price of gold went down from 1900 to basic 1200, extreme high volatility. Like two months ago, everyone says gold will be above 2000, but gold will rise and so on. Now everyone says gold will fall. However, just ignore it and keep your initial allocation and watch it from the sofa. But on the other hand, there is so much money involved in the financial markets, uh, maybe too much money that... Yeah. But then there are also uh, quite a number of people, uh, so the money is sort of distributed and we need to have that money in order to save for the retirement. Like, uh, there are basically two ways for the retirement. The one is, uh, I mean, if you think of conceptually, the one thing is you invest in human capital, that means our kid pay for us, or you invest in, uh, in stocks and other things so that the capital is paying for us. And we have both. In earlier days, it was just human capital. Our kids pay for us. Then it was the whole human capital. That's what the, uh, the current retirement system is. And it will be now more that we take the markets in addition to it. And these are huge amounts of money, but it's good. So we, we need to live on that uh, once we get even older. You see a big difference between, let's say, Germany or England and the United States? I mean, taken locally, I don't see a big difference between Netherlands and, and Germany, and uh, not so much in England. In the US, they are more, uh, for a longer time, experienced through the, the market movement and so on. So they might, in some way, take it easier. In Germany, we have a tradition, unfortunately, to invest in single stocks, through advertising for single stocks. So we should have more, the, we should learn more to invest wisely, broadly, more diversified. But I hope that we, we come to it.